Check me out now. It's the Funk Soul Brother right about now. It's the Funk Soul Brother. What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. And you see the thumbnail. I'm going to talk about this Star Wars thing and these new fans, specifically these new black fans. For the, for the sake of this video, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to talk to you my black people out there. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that anybody else can't be involved, anybody else can't comment in the comment section, but I've always said, I think that it's funny that black people spend so much time online trying to tell white people this and try to tell white people that. I remember talking about this before. There's an actual movie and a show called Dear White People. And I'm like, before you made a show like that, you should have made one called Dear Black People with black people talking to black people. But no, we we don't do that because we value the, the the opinions and the views of white people more than we do ourselves. We do. What do you think Black Lives Matter is about? Who do you think they're talking to when they say Black Lives Matter? They're not talking to us, even though we're the number one killers of us. So you think that you would tell us first that Black Lives Matter, right? No, but that's not the case. So anyway, let me start off by saying this, okay? When I first started my videos, I was talking mostly about social issues, things that I saw going on outside my window like, Mother, mother, there's far too many of you crying. That was me. I was talking about things that was going on in the hood. I was talking to my brother, brother, brothers. And I was talking to maybe about three, four, five subs per video, all right? Nobody was trying to hear me. The only people that was coming by to hear me wanted to argue with me because one thing you can't do with too many black people is tell them the truth. They don't want to hear it, guys. So they'd rather argue you down and insult you and call you colorful names like coon, which was interesting to me because as far as I knew, that was a racial slur. We just got through stopping or telling each other to stop calling each other nigger. You see how that, well that's working. Oh, I'm sorry, nigger, right? But then... Oh, now we're calling each other coons. Woo, we're doing that now. So that's what was going on there, right? It wasn't until I did a video about a little old movie called The Last Jedi that all of a sudden I started getting subs. All of a sudden I started getting views. All of a sudden I had all of these people coming in to hear what I had to say. And you wouldn't know it today by looking at my view count, but back then I was doing tens of thousands of views and then I got monetized and it was just like, Zzz! right down the drain but anyway i ain't crying about that and don't you cry for me argentina so anyway i got all of these people and um you know big shout out to uh to jeremy and ethan van skyver they gave me shout outs uh back then which did uh obviously contribute to a lot of people coming by to check me out and then staying god bless them you know but those same black voices that i started off talking to started really going in on me back then Oh, you trying to be like them. You trying to be down with them. You're just a kiss ass. You don't know anything about this. They were trying to act like I didn't belong in this fandom. Even though I've been a Star Wars fan. I've been a Star Trek fan. Marvel, DC. Shit, man. I used to collect Archie comics. Richie Rich, Elf Quest. Just about everything that you could name. I collected. I loved comics. I just loved reading them. You know what I mean? I was into G.I. Joe. All that stuff. You know my creds, man. I don't have to show you a badge. But... To so these people, they could not imagine that black people could actually be as passionate as anybody else inside of this fandom. You know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, okay, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to be how I am, whatever. You know, but it, it's interesting to me today, fast forwarding, to see all of these new fans all of a sudden. This is something I started noticing right around the time of uh, Black Panther. You know what I mean? I'm sitting in a Black Panther movie, ready to watch this dope comic book movie, you know, because Marvel was doing their thing, MCU. All of a sudden, I'm looking at all of these new black fans. And I'm like, hmm. This could be good, but at the same time, if they don't share the same knowledge and the same passion and the same love, this could actually change the dynamic of the fandom. You know what I'm saying? Of how the studios view the fandom and how they cater to the fandom. So I watched, I watched with great interest. I'm like, let's see how this plays out. And lo and behold, I started to notice that these new fans were coming in and they were attempting 
to sabotage the very thing that they were coming in to see it like they weren't appreciating it for what it was they had to change it and that is due in fact in part to disney lucasfilm the mcu all of these people and studio execs were actively trying to virtue signal so they were making bold statements like um you're welcome here Everyone is welcome here. Star Wars is for everyone. Marvel Comics and DC is for everyone. Throw open the doors to all of these people. They're coming to America today. And of course, all of these old fans, or I should say new fans, I'm sorry. I'm an old fan. All of these new fans started coming through the door like it was the Wizard of Oz, like, you're out of the woods, you're out of the dark, you're out of the night. Step into the sun, step into the light. And they're coming through the door like, ooh, there's no place like home. And I'm just like on the other side of the door like, I've been here the whole time. And it's not just me. There's a host of black and Spanish and Indian and Asian. All types of fans have been here for years because we always knew we didn't need someone to give us permission. I've talked about this in videos before. We didn't need anyone to give us permission to be here. We've always been here. But you got these new fans coming in and when they come in, they start trying to nitpick and they go back with a fine tooth comb trying to find evidence of racism in the source material. And it's just like, they're, they don't realize that you, you're in, you're, what you're doing is you're insulting all of us who have contributed to this culture of all different walks of life, including black people, up until this point. You have to be the generation that's going to go back in time and fix what you thought, what you think is wrong, right? So you're offended. That's what these people are, right? The, the, these are the people who go back to Gone with the Wind and they're embarrassed by Hattie McDaniels because she played a maid. She played uh, something akin to a slave. So they're embarrassed by that because they're ashamed of their beginnings. I am not ashamed. Don't ask me to be ashamed from where I've come from. We overcame that. Do you understand? The mere fact that I can sit on a camera and I can talk relatively educated, kind of, you know, to you instead of Isaac, Yusa, Weezer and all of that stuff shows you that we have progressed. America has progressed. You need to accept that instead of acting like uh, history just started today. So they feel that it's their duty to go back and pick at the work of George Lucas and, uh, uh, well, yeah, Steven Spielberg too, because now they're questioning a lot of stuff about him. And also Gene Roddenberry, you know, all of the people. I Man, I even heard somebody say that uh, Charles M. Schultz, the creator of Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Peanuts, uh, was racist too, you know? And it's just like, I grew up on all of this stuff. I found inspiration in all of this stuff. So I'm like, please stop. You're missing the point, you know? But that's what you get with these new fans. So all of these studio execs and stuff who are encouraging this stuff, oh, Star Wars is for everybody. I was one of the only people who came out and said, no, that's wrong. Star Wars is not for everybody. It is not. It's only for people who get it only for people who understand it. And that has nothing to do with race or gender or sexuality, all of that stuff that they're trying to put into play. Every time they shovel out some piece of shit, new show or movie, they want to hide behind race and gender and sex. <clears throat> but those of us who know, we know that this is just a cover for what they're trying to do. Are there racist people in the fandom? Of course there are. It goes two ways. It's on both sides of things. You got black people on one side who these new fans, oh, I want to see me. How come I can't see me? Where's, where's me? It reminds me of do the right thing, right? When uh, Spike Lee, when Mookie was trying to tear down Sal's pizzeria, that pizzeria, even back then, I knew that was wrong. He worked hard for that. That was his blood, sweat, and tears. He was Italian. If he wants to put pictures of Italian people up on the wall, he should be allowed to do that. Get your own pizzeria, Mookie, if you want to put some black people up on the wall. But they tore it down. And this is what we're seeing today. They demand that I want to see people who look like me or I'm going to make it not fun for everybody. I'm going to tear it down. And my challenge to you, black fans, all right, because I'm talking to you now. Don't be Mookie. 
Don't be that person who looks at another person's hard work, sweat, and tears and want to tear it down and want to critique it. And I want to get into this real quick, guys. I know this is going on long. I want to just get to the point and get out real quick. I got this sent to me by the one, the only, the lovely OG Star Wars. Big shout out in the middle of the video. I should have shouted you out from the very beginning. But OG Star Wars sent this to me, something that she saw on Twitter that I think is very, very interesting. I want to make a quick commentary on this because it speaks to what we're talking about right here. And what it is, is we have a black woman who considers herself to be a Star Wars fan. I dare say she's probably one of those new fans that I'm talking about who has gone back to look at Return of the Jedi and she has a problem with the Twi'lek, I believe it's pronounced, the dancer, the slave who was dancing for Jabba the Hutt before he retracted the floor. She fell through the floor and the Rancor got her and she was devoured and she was killed. Now all of a sudden she's having a problem with this and let's get into what she says. It says here, not saying her name, so... On my podcast, when we reviewed Return of the Jedi, one of the things that did not sit right with me is this entire sequence, the sequence that I just got through talking about. People keep saying Twi'leks are bi BIPOC, which means uh, black indigenous people of color, coded. In other words, they're not black, but they're kind of like a stand-in for black. You know they're supposed to be black, right? Um, but this actress, Femi Taylor, was an actual black woman. So she's taking offense on behalf of black women because the actress that played this Twi'lek got killed and she was a slave and she's personalizing this. And this is what I'm talking about guys, about people coming in, these new fans who need to see themselves in Disney, Lucasfilm, all of these people, you have encouraged this. This is the monster that you've created. All right, so now these people are going to devour from the inside the very thing that you told them, you're welcome here, come on in with all of your wacky bullshit, you know what I mean? So here they come wanting to pick apart something that happened, uh, a movie, like 40 years ago, okay? So what I would say, obviously, to this person and people like this who are just so determined to see white supremacy in everything... All right, these are the people who go back, like I said before, they're the ones who rally against the Dukes of Hazard. You know, they go back and they want to go into state parks and want to tear down statues and all of this stuff because they have a hard time coming to grips with what they overcame. Instead of being proud of it, they want to erase it. And you're erasing your history. All right, so anyway, you got these people who are doing this, right? And um, unfortunately, um, I would say to you, Right. If you are a fan of Star Wars and you're objecting to something like this, I would point out to you, um, challenge yourself to actually watch this and understand a couple of things. All right. Number one, let me point this out. Anakin Skywalker was a slave. OK, he came up from slavery. As a matter of fact, Star Wars is based on rebellion. They're rebelling against something. They're rebelling against oppression. So obviously everybody involved with Star Wars who's not part of the Empire is being oppressed. Either they're laying down and taking it and they're being abused or they're rising up and fighting. And these are your rebels. All right. So Anakin was a, a, a slave. His mother was a slave, a woman, a white woman, if you want to call her that. All right. And um. She was abused. I suspect she was even sexually violated. I don't know. Those sand people were kind of freaky, even though uh, these days Boba Fett is making nice with them. Back then, they abused this woman who died a slave, and she was abused. And I didn't see white women talking about, this is offensive to us everywhere. You know, even though these days you might get that. But the point is, is that that's how it is in Star Wars. That's what it was. Because you're so hung up on wanting to see you everywhere you're taking offense to that even though this is say it with me a galaxy far far away there's a reason why george lucas put that at the top of every single movie and there's a reason why kathleen kennedy decided to take that out of the top of these shows that she has going on today all right because they want us to forget that they want to inject today's sensibilities into all of this stuff so that you welcome it to people like this who are going to come in and want to pick everything apart and be offended by it rather than be happy for Femi Taylor who actually paved the way for people like Lapita Nyong'o, for people like Thindewe Newton, for people like, uh, dare I say, Moses Ingram, you know, to come in. By the way, Moses Ingram, another one who didn't want to change her hair from her natural texture as a black woman instead of committing to this role in an alternate universe. 
she could not commit to it. And maybe that's the reason why she had such a problem resonating with, um, you know, audiences everywhere. You know, much to the contrary of these people who want to act like, oh, she's just so popular. No, she was rejected because people just didn't buy her in the role. She didn't sell herself into that role. And that's the problem. That's the problem with these new fans. So to wrap this up, my challenge to black people is come out of her, my children. Come out of the chains of racial identity. I've been saying this for a long time and so many of you think it means that I'm ashamed to be who I am. No, what I'm saying is rise up to be all that you can be. And I ain't talking about going into the army either. I'm talking about seeing yourself as more than what the world sees you as. Challenge yourself to be otherworldly, to be a superior being, to not be weighed down by the chains of of racial identity. Challenge yourself to step into another world, another universe. Challenge your children to do that too because when you don't do that, you're limiting your scope of imagination and that's what you're seeing here. You're going back and you're being offended by something that is talking to your sense of imagination, all right? These black women who played the Twi'leks, they were not playing black women. All right, because I hate to tell you this. There's no Africa in a galaxy far, far away. There's no Asia. There's no Europe. There's no India. There's no South America. There's none of that stuff. We're talking about a totally other reality, other world. So I'm telling you, I'm speaking to black people, but like I said, everyone can comment on this, right? But I'm speaking to black people. There's a reason why people are taking you as a joke because you're presenting yourself as a joke. You're presenting yourself as a joke by not getting what this is all about. You need some self-awareness and understand that only you hold the key to that cage. All right, the cage actually doesn't even have a lock. You refuse to open it and go out into a larger world and understand you are more than race. You're more than that. And that's what science fiction and science fantasy is there for. It challenges us in our minds to see what could be and what you could be if you just allow yourself to be free. So when I see stories like this, when people going back and nitpicking with a fine tooth comb, this is racist, this is offensive, this has to change, this has to be banned, and all of that stuff, you're sabotaging your own imagination, you're sabotaging your own learning, and you're seriously shortchanging yourself because you're not even imagining all the good that you could be, all the greatness that you could be, so much more than what this world says you are. If the world says that you're a nigger, why would you act that way? If the world says that you're a criminal, why would you act that way? If the world says that you're a racist, why would you act that way? This is the point. Challenge yourself to be more. That's what science fiction and science fantasy is about. So guys, I just wanted to say that I know the video is going on long. This is another one of those, all right? But I wanted to get that point out there, guys, because I felt so strongly about this and so passionate. Thank you to OG Star Wars for showing this to me. Maybe I can get the Dark Council to sound off on this too. Who knows? But anyway, guys, it's enough that you saw it. Thank you guys for listening. And um, like, share, subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. This is The Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.